Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sisters podcast coming at you live from Virtual Trek Cons, Minicon. Hello, everybody. I'm Tamia, and I'm joined here today with my sisters, Yvette. Hey, hello. <laughs> Sabrina Wood. Whoop, whoop. And Fran T. What's happening, y'all? Hi, everybody. We're really excited uh, to be here. Thank you, Seventh Rule. We love you. We love you, Chat Pack. Thank you, Ryan and Sarak and Melissa and and Anne Marie Siegel. We love you. We heart you. We heart you so hard. Thank you for asking us to be a part of this awesome event. We've loved all the mini cons. They're super cool. And we're super excited to be here today because we're going to talk our favorite show ever. Our favorite show is Deep Space Nine. I think that comes as no surprise, correct? Correct. correct. <laughs> it comes as no surprise. We are talking our top 10 Deep Space Nine episodes. Now, this is a collaborative list that Sci-Fi Sisters have made together. So we all have our own individual uh, <laughs> We all have our own individual top 10 list. Uh, this list, we try to uh, not kill each other. Uh, <laughs> what? Sound, sounded real easy on Monday. It <laughs> sure did. Like, oh, let's talk about that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Some of the best episodes of Deep Space Nine ever got one vote. You know, it was really hard. Wow. Really hard. Yeah. Yvette, what was the process like for you? Let's talk about your process. Ooh, it was um, gut wrenching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't do a very good job, as many of the sisters have told me. I, yeah, no, uh, she didn't. She really didn't. <laughs> it is what it is. As I always say, it is a damn good show. So I, I don't know what to tell you. You got what thirty four instead of ten. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, tell you. We I, asked for 10. She gave us 34 shows. <laughs> <laughs> I did break it down a little bit. I think no, I no, no. She don't believe the hype, y'all, because... I, I gave us 28 instead of 10. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she she gave us she did an entire season. She included one entire season. So there's that. Fran, what's about nine. your process? <laughs> <laughs> Episode nine, the Dominion War. Like what 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 are we gonna do with that, Eva? <laughs> That's number three, the Dominion War. The last ten episodes. Let's see. True. That's true. Well, I followed the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> After oh, I whittled down to 25 episodes, <laughs> I had to go in and then whittle up to 10. So, and it wasn't, it wasn't easy because I thought one of my, well, my honorable mention, nobody kind of, you know, wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, come on now. It's a great episode. And so, you know, but I followed the assignments. Yes, you did. You did. You were a good girl. I was a good girl. Sabrina was okay. I, just, I gave the instructions. So. <laughs> Sabrina was a really good girl. No, no, Sabrina wasn't a really good girl because Sabrina did like some crazy like woodland, like whatever. But it was very just Sabrina put though. Just put 10 I tried on. They in order. I tried to disperse it out, disperse it so that there was something from each kind of arc and, and everybody yelled at me. <laughs> I was like, here's a Dominion one, here's a Garrick one. And they were like, no, that's not how you do it. So I want you all to know that this is a very good example of why the Black female vote is not monolithic. <laughs> right. no. So true. This is very true. Okay, so we got so four true. sisters and we got four very diverse opinions and somehow we whittled down 173 episodes to 10 and we're going to do it in the next 45 minutes. Go. Go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so the way we're going to work this, I mean, for real, she's right, because I like my initial list had 44 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, it, yeah. was, it was ridiculous. The way we're going to do it is we're going to start at number 10. 
and uh, I will read a little bit of the recap of the show, and then we'll get into why we think, and, and we'll let you all know why and how this came to be on the list, <laughs> and why it might have the place that it has. Because this one, number 10, is Empak Noor from season five, episode 24. So scavenging an abandoned Cardassian space station, identical to DS9 for equipment, O'Brien's team discovers the station may not be completely abandoned. Mm. This was a contentious one, was it not? It was. Very much, yeah. <laughs> and some people would have put it up much, much higher, right? Much. 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 And some people put it down a little bit lower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's an excellent episode. So Tell so us why you would have put it so so much higher. Why I would? You or Sabrina, either one of you. Go ahead, Sabrina. Well, I, I love this one because number one, it shows you what we talked about last night and why the other two sisters really didn't like it, or at least one sister, mm -hmm. is because Deep Space Nine does something that I don't think a lot of the other franchises did. Well, maybe they did. They could do any kind of genre. And here we have like a pure horror. It is really like an old style movie where <laughs> you go into the spooky house and people start getting killed. Right. And I thought it was really good that they still brought it into the DS9 world but it was just really scary. But then it got some really psychological, you know, war trauma things in it too. And that's why I loved it. It, it was like a, a real flair for old school, drama, old school horror, but with the DS9 take. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think that's why um, certain people didn't like it because it was too much horror. And I think that's that shows how good it was that you know, people who don't like horror are like, nope, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> well, that was horrible. <laughs> that just could be, okay. <laughs> I don't like horror. I've never been in a horror house in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't look, watch horror movies. And I didn't like it on D Space Nine either. I think I've, I've, I think I've seen this episode maybe twice. Oh, okay. And I mean, I mean, for 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 what it's worth, it is great because you know, D Space Nine is great. However, not my cup of tea as far as uh uh Star Trek goes. I actually love this episode, but I too am not a horror person. So like I just choose not to be so scared all the time, <laughs> you know. But when this episode comes on, I can't not watch it, you know? And that was my criteria for myself personally, for my list, like because DS9 is on, we forgot, I forgot to talk about that. Um, DS9 is on all the time and um, in my house, you know? So even, <laughs> you know, I might be doing, going around, puttering around, doing other things, but I can hear it in the background. Some shows, make me stop what I'm doing and actually sit down and watch them. Right. You know, I have a hard time concentrating on what I'm doing when they're on. That was my criteria. That was finally how I was able to get down from 44 to 10. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's asking me if I like Viking zombies. <laughs> yes, you know, I love alien Viking, you know, no Viking zombies. Vulcan zombies, Vulcan. come on. Enterprise yeah, Vulcan, Vulcan zombies. zombies, that's one of my wrong, wrong, wrong show, wrong show, wrong show. <laughs> Still good though. It was, it definitely was. Um, yeah, you definitely, you guys have to tell me the, uh, tell me the chat because I can't see the chat on my phone right now. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. Enterprise Eve, yes girl, you know that was my show. Anyhow, go ahead, no, number, <laughs> should we go on? Okay, to number nine, nine. nine. number nine. nine. Number nine, For the Uniform, season five, episode 13. Cisco obsessively pursues Maquis leader, Michael Eddington. Okay, I love this one too. It just wasn't happening. It just wasn't far up on my list, but it was on my list. Why, why was it far up on the list for you guys who put it up there? Who, who voted for this one? You, me, friend? Yeah, we yeah we did. I voted because Cisco was badassery badass. 
Hey. I, you know, he, you know, he just like, oh wow. And then the little blurb at the end when he said, and when Dax asked him, Well, did you clear this with you know stuff, you know, with uh the fact he was like, Oh, I knew I forgot something. However, <laughs> you know, he and he got Eddington, you know, he was just, you know, did what he does, only more magnificently so. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sabrina? Well, I think in this one, Cisco is amazing. I mean, I think this is an amazing performance by Avery Brooks, as if they're not all. And the trend, if somebody said, is there a trend of like, yeah, every time Cisco is the main guy, it's one of my favorites, except for Empire North. But he starts this one out truly getting whipped by Eddington. He is just mad. He is just freaking out his mind. Then he just goes like, I'm going to get this mo Woo, baby. And I'm like, oh, I'm there for the ride. I'm there for the ride. I was like, oh, you just did the wrong thing, Eddington. And then my favorite line in this one, though, and I think it's in this one, is when Odo comes up and says, would you please remind Starfleet that this is the man that you had? Oh, my God. Yes. You didn't trust me. Right. <laughs> yes. I said, OK, even Odo's getting some smacks in. This was, this was That's amazing. right. Through shade. I mean, just shaded him. Yeah. And stopped. I him. love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had this. This was on my honorable mentions, but I had some other episodes that edged it out. Um, and I, I God, it was so hard. Like, I don't really know why, you know? <laughs> I really love this episode. <laughs> I watch it every time. But, you know, if that was, this one wasn't on your list, was it? At all. Right. <laughs> Because you have a you, you have a Maki issue. Okay. Here we go with the I non do not like the Maki. I don't like anything about them. I didn't like them in TNG. I I don't like them. There you have it. Yvette does not like the Maki. Yvette has a Maki allergy, and it's it's a shame. That's okay. I feel the same way about the Ferenginar. There you go. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Number eight. Number eight. I love this one. Number eight on the Sci-Fi Sisters list is uh, Second Skin, season three, episode five. Kira is kidnapped by the Cardassians who try to convince her that she is really one of them. Mm. Can I just speak on this one? Because I love this episode. I mean, it came so early in DS9's life, you know? Mm. Uh, it's such strong writing. It's such a beautiful um, uh, character study uh, for both Kira and um, gosh, now I forget his name. Uh, the Cardassian man that uh, she was playing opposite, who really believed that she was, that she was his daughter. I can't believe I forgot his name that fast, just like that. You guys, you guys in the chat, somebody, somebody in the chat knows. <laughs> I think his name was Amor. Um, But you know, it was just Kira. It really forced her to face her prejudices, you know, um, and, and her preconceived notions. Now, granted, they weren't preconceived from nowhere. You know, the Cardassians were terrible to her um, and to her people. And she literally had to fight for their lives against them. So, you know, it's not like she was just hating for hate's sake or because she grew up with people telling her that people, these people were bad. Um, you know, so you know, she she really, oh yeah, was a great, hi Mohammed, uh, was a great performance. Um, you know, so I just love this episode, you know, I mean, I think she gave an amazing performance. I think it was so deep. I think she was forced to confront her, her own prejudices and um, start to gain a deeper understanding of coexisting with other people. Right. So it was very high up on my personal list. Oh, but she had the right to be prejudiced. They occupied her country. Mm -hmm. And forced them into, so. you know, slave labor and everything. So she had, she had the the, the right to feel the way she did. Mm -hmm. she, That's what I said. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. She had that right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I totally agree. And Nana, uh, Nana visitor was outstanding. She was in this episode. Yes. Amazing. She's always. Yes. Up. I thought the scene where uh, Nana was, but at one second she had that, you know. There were four lights moment mm -hmm. when she really thought for a second that yeah. maybe she was this right. maybe mm -hmm. she was this person. I lose it every time that scene comes on because she just 
you just know, like maybe my mind, maybe I, maybe everything I believe is not true. Right. And it's a very scary moment. And I, you get it in that scene with her. I just, that's my favorite part. When she breaks mm -hmm. down at that last scene, it's just like, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then of course the cavalry comes and saves it, but then it's all, it's all okay. Right. <laughs> and then it's over. Yvette, do you have any thoughts on Second Skin? Um, not Shadow really. Girl? It wasn't on my list at all. Um, but I, I like I think when we when we voted on it, I was like, oh, I don't know why I didn't why didn't I remember that one? Because that's a great <laughs> one, you know. But it, it it wasn't one that stands out to me of all the other ones that I have. So it, it is a great episode. I love Kira in this. Um, but I think um I, I, I think is the reason why I probably didn't put this on is because I uh, I read a lot of the books and they really go in depth on um, Ileana Gamore. I think that's their last name. Yeah. Uh -huh. Order that, so there's, there's a lot of uh, post nemesis um, D, DS9 book novels that, that, that go on, on and on about her. I mean, she's, she's a character for a lot of, so yeah, I, I think I probably got a little, um, you know, I was overwhelmed. I was like, no more. I'm good. <laughs> okay. But okay. It's, it's definitely a good, it's definitely a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving right along. Speedily, rapidly, right along to <laughs> number seven. seven. <laughs> number seven on our list, a little bit lighter, is Little Green Men, uh, season four, episode eight. A malfunction on Quark's new ship causes Quark, Rom, and Nog to crash in the year 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico. Love this one. <laughs> Even though I said I wasn't wild about Ferenginar, I oh, like wait, these wait. Ferengis. <laughs> I want to clarify before I start getting letters. <laughs> <laughs> I love this episode. It's hilarious, you know. Um, I mean, it's a, it's such a, a wonderful homage to all the um, early sci-fi movies, uh, you know. I mean, to me, and and you get to see um, these guys, you know, they just have so much fun together. So I can, their chemistry is so wonderful that I can really just watch them <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> I love that they brought the hippie guy from TOS to play the general Little Green. Yeah, me too, Muhammad. That was so cool. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know that for years. <laughs> that was oh, so man. Cool. Everybody was in this. They they really did it. And you know what? This is really interesting because you said that to me. It, this was a time when whenever there was like an alien threat in the old movies, they would bring out the army and they were just going to bazooka the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Now you got superheroes taking care of everything. Water world. Remember the right. army? Yeah, remind me of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jill. Hi, Eve. <laughs> I couldn't. I get, couldn't read everybody's comments because I they flashed on a little fast for me. Uh, but hi. Thanks and for I joining wanted, us. I wanted to know how these stars all felt about the fact that they all had to puff cigarettes through this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> like they were back in the fifties, it was well, choking me just watching this. They thing. probably all smoked back, back then. Them. Remember that was what the nineties? That yeah. was the nineties. No, that was the forties. No, no, the, no the, when the episode oh, was made. made. Okay, yeah, yeah but they were supposed, <laughs> <to be, laughs> supposed to be <laughs> like they smoke. were in the forties, so they was all smoking. It was horrible. And of course, <laughs> Quark wanted to. Quark wanted to really expound on that. He was telling me these people are crazy. You know, they, they do, they eat this, they smoke these stocks and say, oh man, we have a ball here. He was ready. <laughs> Quark was ready to do some business. He was That's like, right. That's this right. This is going all over this planet. Let's go. That's right. <laughs> it was pure Ferengi, you know, pure Ferengi right there. He was like, okay, right. new place, new place, new business opportunities, baby. That's Let's go with it. <laughs> hey, you guys can make some money on the other end of the wormhole. I can definitely make some money on Earth. <laughs> right? In 1947. Right. Who had this on their um on their list? I did. Oh, I did. You did. Okay. I did not. Yeah. I did. Not. Sure I did. I don't <laughs> so so the, the I think 10 through 5 are ones that out of the 140 out of the 173 Got two sisters to vote from the list of 45 down to 25 yeah. to 10 to arguing to two votes on the list. 
that, that's how it happens. So, yes. so it, it was painful, y'all. It was. Just to believe this was a painful process, and I don't recommend it to anybody. I don't know. Hey, hey Bill. <laughs> hey, <George. laughs> I don't. I don't know how those folks over at Trek Ranks do it, man. Because it's difficult just doing one little list. <laughs> I know. We thought this is going to be. Oh yeah, end of the year, Christmas time is the time for list. This will be easy. We'll be done. Yeah. We worked on this for like four days and we're yelling, and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep it moving right yeah. along, speedily, yeah. rapidly, a pace right along. The Ship, number six is The Ship, season five, episode two. And uh, Cisco fights to keep the wreckage of a crashed Jem'Hadar fighter. Holy, holy Batman. Yeah. This was a good one. Yeah. It wasn't on my list, but it was still a good one. Yeah. Mine either. Yeah. On my list. Yeah. It was on Sabrina and Yvette's list. Woo. So, yeah, baby. This is a, yeah. this is a home dinger, this one. Go ahead, I, I, I love it. this. I love this episode. I love them all. But um, this one had a lot of good stuff. I love the fact that they used the NCOs of Starfleet. I love that being an NCO myself. Um, I just loved it. The I, I cried. I watched this this morning and I was actually, I mean, I know what's happened. I know what's going to happen. And I still was a little misty when uh, Kike died. Um <laughs> Uh, I was like, okay. oh my gosh, you know, and O'Brien, I was like, damn, can they stop telling O'Brien, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to, I need you to fix this. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what the uh, NCOs do. You know, like the officers are always telling us to fix stuff. I'm um, like, I just one of me settle down, you know, and that's just the way it was. It was like, O'Brien, you, you saw the magic that he is and how, you know, everything, he has to fix everything. You know, but he was still trying to deal with his soldier, you know, his man, you know, he, his man was down, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't leave your man down. But, you know, everybody else had to be rescued also. And getting that ship would mean uh, saving the Alpha Quadrant. So, um, you know, five people died on that ship, plus mm -hmm. the runabout crew, right? Didn't runabout, runabout crew. got it. Yeah. And then all the Jemadar soldiers. So all those people yeah. died. Um <laughs> Still, you know, life's life. Um, you know, it's it, it's a deep one. I, I love this. Yeah. One. The fact that they're in that ship and all that, all the the concussion um, is going around them, and you know, it, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. I, I really enjoy that one a lot. Yeah, I thought I thought that was something that you don't usually see in a lot of these Star Trek when they have a, you know, a pew, pew, pew scene, mm -hmm. it's usually just for a few minutes, but these guys were enduring this for days. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. days that they were being shelled. And so I, I think that they really got that across them, that they were sweaty, they were hot, they mm -hmm. were getting short tempered, they were getting on each other's nerves. They And Worf put O'Brien in a chokehold, okay? <laughs> That's how bad this guy, he was trying to choke his stupid. Yeah. And you know, again, one of my favorite scenes: Cisco dressing down everybody, everybody. even Dad Zia, I mean, including like, Dax. Yep. yep. Toda, it is, and nobody is laughing. I nobody's just love, laughing. I, it's the best. Oh, so that's one of my favorite ones because that made me feel like you know how when your parents used to just shame you with that one line, one you know, line. you'd be like, "I'm a badass, I'm cool," you know, and then your parents would be like, "Just cut you that one." You're like. Dang, you can't even pretend like it didn't cut, like it didn't hurt, you know? Right, right. <laughs> you rolled it, rolled it. Yeah, exactly. And so you many know? new things were brought into this uh, episode that you didn't know. I mean, it's a season five, so, you know, stuff is getting hot now. And I, how did you know that, you know, that last line when he says about when they were watching um, Kike's... Uh, body at the end and he said i hope this is all worth it and then you come to realize that you know I, when you watch it after the whole season is over and you realize that yes this this ship is going to yes. be the thing that saves the whole day like yes Kike, right you know, really meant something man you saved the whole freaking alpha quad with getting yeah, that yeah. ship oh my god I cry. i'm gonna cry okay go to the next yeah one. Go to the next <laughs> yeah i know right yeah that's a good that's a good point so because some so many times, like all these 
you know, these, uh, we don't get uh, a sense of, of uh, was it worth it? Right. You know, but I love this one because it's definitely uh, the needs of, out, of the many, you know, outweigh the needs of the few or the one, yeah. you know, for sure. For sure. Uh, okay. Moving right along. Please, I need something. Yeah. Is it a happy one? I know, because now we start getting into uh, this. This part was contentious, y'all. If you thought it was Ooh. hard getting to the, the the bottom half, we were we were scrapping over the top half. Just so you know. I'm glad we weren't. In, I'm glad we weren't in the same room. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, you, and we did. I mean, I think we did a little bit more scrap. Oh no, it was half and half. We really did scrap a lot. Don't worry, this one. So at number five. We have placed the sound of her voice, oh, season God, six, episode twenty-five. I know another happy one. The Defiant receives a distress call from a Starfleet captain stranded on an inhospitable planet. I love this one. Yeah, but and whose list? Who? And I didn't have it on my list though, but I love it. I who had it on their list? Me. I, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's you three. Yeah. Yeah. It's Go ahead. Mm. <laughs> Everything about this from beginning to end is perfect. It's just perfect. It starts out with banter. Um, it oh, it starts out at Quarks. Um, Odo is doing his crumungeon thing to Quark, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden Narice comes in. He goes, Narice, <laughs> you know, and he, he kind of goes off with Narice and they're like, well, what just happened? <laughs> you, know, and, you know, and then all of that nonsense happens with Quark and Odo. Odo ends up, you know, paying Quark back for helping him out because, you know, we all know that they're really good friends, um, even though they don't want anybody else to know. Right. Um, and then we, we're on the ship and there's a lot of contention between um, Ben and, and Cassidy, and I just love the banter. I like I, I watched it and I was like, wait, I know this by heart. I like know the the banter back and forth, um, you know. And so it was a lot of that, you know. It was a lot of a lot of everybody. Everybody was so included in this whole episode, and it was mm -hmm. it was it was a lot of background information given. It was a lot of um, personal information given. And it was the savior of it was somebody that we never even saw. Uh, it was the voice of this captain that was on this L-class planet and they had to go get her. And mm -hmm. she saved, I think she saved our heroes, you know? Um, yeah. Because they, were, they, they weren't getting any rest. It was war. And it, things could have turned out a lot differently if they didn't get this, this reprieve, this reprise, you know? Somebody who said, okay, I need to listen to you because she don't know nothing about them. You know, she's an outsider um, and they needed that. You know, they really needed that. I, I never, the, 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 the scene when Miles is in his bunk, I mean, he's sitting, he's laying in his bunk like he's in a, a, a casket, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? So it was all about saving their mental health, saving their lives because they're all so scared about losing each other that they're not really with each other anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I understand that. You know, yeah, this was um, deep in the war. They, they yeah, were. Was, this is season. This is almost the end of season six. Yeah. So they're exhausted. Was, they've been fighting and they've been losing people. Yeah, and you know. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just been really tough on all of them, and they're they're like you say they're they're not working well together, and they're having problems with it. You know, even Cassidy's making comments about. Uh, Bashir not being his jovial, talkative self, and Ben right. saying, "You know, I think I like him better this way." And, and then he says, "They're well, joking." And that's she says, mean. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just kidding. No, you weren't. <laughs> you weren't. Nope. And it's you funny though, even though they're having this little sniff, you know, yeah. going at each other. When he gets up to leave, he gives her his coffee. He gives her his coffee, <laughs> and I just went, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm mad at you, but here, baby, hit my coffee. I gotta yeah. go." I'm like, oh, right. huh? I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> she became the ship's counselor. Yeah. She was the ship's counselor. And at that point, they needed that. Mm -hmm. they yeah. Really needed hey, that. Steve. Yeah, they needed it badly. And, and it was funny how they were saying that they didn't need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's always the way, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. it is. Yeah. She called O'Brien out on that. She was like, well, if all you need are your friends, where are they? Right. 
Very yeah, nice. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful one. I love it. And I love the fact that, you know, because really what ended up happening was that um, they could focus le- by trying to be of service to somebody else. Yeah. It helped them become less focused inward and self centered you know, not self-centered, self-centered in a negative way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, no, right. I- you're right. You know, um, and then, you know, which really helped them to get by. Like, you know, it, it feels like what's, what's there's medical studies about what doing good does to you internally, physically, right. yeah. you know, and, um, you know, and so I love that part, too. Yeah. On that one. You know, OK, we get, you know, we get a race to the end. You know, we're racing to get there. We're doing like, you know, we're doing warp, you know, 9.5. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The defying <laughs> is shaking. It's good. <laughs> it's good oh my God. They're going to blow the ship up trying to get there. Oh, save the phaser reserve. Cisco's like, damn the phaser reserve. We got to get to Cisco. <laughs> oh my God. We got to go get her. What? Hey, Galinda. Hi, War Dogheim. I missed you too. Okay, guys. Um, Love it. Number four. Did it happen? Not, a, not so much. Kind of, sort of, but heavy. Number four. At number four, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised that this is only number four. They might have assumed that it would be higher on our list, but it's four. And that is The Visitor, season four, episode three. After an accident in the engine room of The Defiant, apparently, after an accident in the engine room of The Defiant, apparently claims the life of Benjamin Sisko, Jake lives out his life in an endless, an endless quest to locate his father. Um, I mean, this is, everybody knows I've said it a million times. This is one of my all time favorite shows, uh, favorite episodes of any Trek ever. Um, for me, it's, uh, uh, far beyond the stars. And this one are really close to one and two in my book. Um, so, uh, but, um, I mean, I love this show. I love this episode. I think it's just a beautiful episode. And I think the, tenderness and the intimacy that we see uh between father all all iterations of son and father um is just uh melts my heart every time i remember like this episode really helped me deal with the uh death of my father uh and i mean there's just so much to this episode it's such a beautifully contained story um and uh i i mean i could sing its praises like all day uh, Andrew Robinson's daughter, Rachel, did an amazing job. I thought, you know, she brought like a, a part that didn't have, hey, Casey, a part that didn't have that much to do. She made it really tantalizing and hard to stop watching her. Um, you know, just every moment of it. The only, you know, I have one drawback on the episode, but that's, you know, <laughs> it's one little drawback. And that's just makeup when they aged the characters looked a little hokey to me. <laughs> didn't look quite natural but, and, it, and it sort of pulls me out a little bit but uh, i mean come on it's the visitor that's 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 I, my take on it i ugly snot cry <laughs> every time i see every time and i you know we all know what's going to happen and you know what that time when jake is when his dad is laying on the bed in the th- in thing and it's jake and he's there and he just puts his head down and and he I okay, I'm gonna stop because I don't want no snot running. I don't want my face <laughs> to be all over. Please don't do that. Please don't. I, you know, because you know, I had, <laughs> I had, you know, I know, I had this uh, kind of a, a mixture uh, relationship with my with my bio, biological father. So <laughs> it was, it was, you know, every time I look at it, it is gut wrenching. To me, mm-hmm. and I cry. It's too, much. It's, it's, it's too much, actually, for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 It's 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 and a I, lot. And this is this is one of the episodes I wish to people who are non trekking <laughs> would Gary look at. Gary T said it's too late. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he says too late, friend. <laughs> That's me. Oh, oh but, you know, this is one of the episodes I wish the people who aren't trekkies, especially. Mm-hmm. Black folks who never knew there was such a dedicated father and son yes. dynamic on yeah. this show because they, they just dismissed it because it was Star Trek, mm-hmm. you know, right. aliens and all that. I'm like, 
Y'all had no idea in the 90s of this relationship between this single Af this single black man and his son right. who had no earthly idea this was going on. One of the right. best relationships ever on TV. Right. And can up. I just go back? I'm sorry. Can I just go back really quickly to the sound of her voice? That was one of the things that we loved about the sound of her voice, too, was that we found out that this captain was a black woman. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and Wilson. that was not lost on us, right? right. Um, of course, Deborah she's Wilson. dead. You know, yeah. she's, well, she's, she's dead. dead. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we, we couldn't, we can't keep, we couldn't keep one alive until we got Burnham. Right? You know, every <laughs> black woman captain dies. Every single one. Thanks, Thanks Trek. Record. Every single one. It's a bad track record, buddy. It, it might be one. That's not. Maybe one. Is, is she in a book? <laughs> no, I mean I haven't seen her on screen. <laughs> no, no, I don't think the Madge Sinclair didn't die the first time. She made it on the whale one. She made it out. Oh, that's true. One. She, she made Madge made it. She died eventually yeah. though. She, came back she was dead. Her mom and the killed her. Well, she was dead when she when we met her. Right. On right, TV. Right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna don't get on the, don't get on the killing the sisters because we're gonna be here all day. Go on. To the I know. Show. Okay. Oh right. yeah. Anyway, going back to the visitor. Other other thoughts on the visitor. Sabrina, I just want to give a shout out to Tony Todd. I love seeing him as himself, not in you know current makeup. He's such a great actor that um, you know I just love that he was. That he was in Captain, Starfleet captains. Yeah, you're you're right, Bill. But yeah, but yeah, we're Starfleet talking Starfleet captains. captains. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kitty Cat. Did you watch the show? We met her. Oh yeah, she was dead. Yeah, she was dead before we met her. Yeah, that's a TNG thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She sure was dead before we met her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Tony Todd. Okay. All right. And and I'm I'm gonna I'm looking at the time. So yes, and we've got go. three go. big ones to get through. All right. So number three, y'all. At number three, da, 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 we have trials and tribulations, season five, episode six. When temporal investigations arrives on Deep Space Nine, Cisco recounts how he and the crew of the Defiant traveled back in time to the 23rd century to prevent the assassination of Captain James T. Kirk during the original Enterprise's mission to Space Station K-7. Baby, trials and tribulations. That's what I'm talking about. Tell me about this episode. I want to say right now that I'm sorry that I did not vote for this one. When That's okay. don't, don't even try it. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now now you want to come clean? Come on. This was only a three turner, I believe, right? It was only a three chair turn, yeah. I forgot. I forgot Ooh. what had happened. <laughs> you forgot what had happened. You forgot the masterpiece of, of, of filming that is Trials and Tribulations. I, I kind of remembered some stuff, but then I watched it again after we voted and I was like, dang, I should have voted for this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what really gets me about this one? There's there's just a lot of triple, you know, like tossing. There's triple tossing all through this. <laughs> <laughs> just poor animals. I mean, aren't they allowed? And somebody put a bomb in one, and yeah. I was like, "What is this, Batman and the Joker? Like, what are you all doing?" It's like, oh my god, it's like <laughs> these poor tribbles. And then the Klingons were supposedly obliterated the home world. I listened to this one the other day, and I was like, I didn't realize it was this awful towards tribbles. <laughs> so this, uh, this is Eve's top pick. <laughs> Yes. Triple tossing, yes, it's the thing. <laughs> so um I, I I think we all agree that this um this episode, although it had triples, because triples are always gonna be great. People are always gonna love triples, but the masterpiece that was this episode, um, I think I think that's what Sabrina was saying, how she <laughs> kind of forgot about it. And when she watched it, she was like, wow, I know we were talking about it. She goes, I cannot believe I forgot about this episode. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute masterpiece. Yes, it um, is. Mm -hmm. Because there is no scene, it is seamless. You you think you are watching that episode clean. Like it's, it's not from an earlier 60s episode and they put it on a 90s episode. It, it just seems like this is something that they had just, you know, they put together. I, I think 
uh, knowing that, and I think this was for the 30th, what, what was this for the 30th um, season? Um, I think so. It was one, yeah, according to um, the, um, oh my gosh, the companion book for DS9. Oh. I cannot right. remember what, what sent, but it was a milestone episode, milestone year for, for right. Trek. And right. they decided to do this. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 the production was, uh, as Eve, I agree with Eve, a masterpiece. Yeah. I, I thought it was really funny that, uh, you know, if you compare these people going back to the Enterprise, which they love, and you know, they're all gaga over the whole thing, that they really don't know a lot of the details of this particular mission, or, or they, you know, they don't know what really happened, and they can't even like, really identify Kirk. I mean, O'Brien is like, they could check off his Kirk, but they're like, what? <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. Yeah. I hey, thought Nod did a lot better job on Little Green Men after he just read the little Earth Handbook for one second. Right. <laughs> information than these fools had when they right. went back. I was like, well, how do you not know <laughs> which one is Kirk? Right. Come on. But it, it was oh, so good. So, so, so good. And I think I like that so much that I actually always go back and watch the original Tribbles. And I think about this one instead of watching that and think about the first one. I don't know mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I, I mm -hmm. always think when I watch, I'm like, oh, let me watch the original, you know. But I right. always think about trials and tribulations when I think about tribbles. Um, it's This is probably my favorite, my fa I guess this is my favorite tribbles episode. Yes, because um, the the short treks one is kind of leading in there as number two. They're eating of, them. Ooh. What is with the tribble hate? I <laughs> <laughs> I'm like ASPCA. I, I'm, I'm I personally to would not ever want to eat a triple. No, so, yeah. no. I like my I like my triple from Science Division and uh, Peanut Hamper and I cuddle all the time. And uh, so there you have it. <laughs> yes, her name is Peanut Hamper. Peanut Hamper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maria, so, Science Division. Hey, yeah, we love you guys. All right, so number two, here we go back to the sob factory, <laughs> far beyond the stars, season season six, episode thirteen. Experiencing a vision from the prophets, Cisco sees himself as Benny Russell, a science fiction writer in the nineteen fifties who struggles with civil rights and inequality when he writes the story of Captain Captain Benjamin Cisco, a black commander of a futuristic space station. <clears throat> Sorry, there are no words. There are no words for this episode for me. Uh, Brother Benny. Brother Benny. On my list, this episode is number one. And uh, yeah. Hi, hey, Justin. Number I'm gonna one I'm gonna has I, I'm gonna pass it off really quickly. I'm sorry to be so unprofessional, but I've had technical difficulties and I've had to resort to using my phone and my battery's about to die and I need a charger. I shall return. Discuss amongst yourselves. Yes. <laughs> Well, this episode for me hit too a little too close to home. It is actually painful for me to watch mm -hmm. because as being who I am and the age that I am and where I live and mom was born and raised, I remember as a little girl getting on the bus with my uh with my guardian and she says to me, whenever you get on the bus, go to the back of the bus. I was about four or five years old, and I remember that. So this is too close for me to vote it as number one. It's an excellent episode. I just can't watch it. I, I, I can't. I can't because you all have no idea. Even as a five-year-old, four or five-year-old, I question that in my head. Why do we have to go to the back of the bus? But, of course, I couldn't ask. My guardian there, because I probably would have been slapped or something. But you know, yeah. I it's 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 too close. It's too painful. Too real. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's oh, get that. you know, why. Yeah, I I think for all of us, even you know, I'm just a little bit younger, just a shade too younger than you are. So I mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about, because uh, a lot of the stuff that's in this is not. The distant past that it appears to be in Deep Space Nine is within our lifetime. This is this is our lifetime that this stuff was happening. So it is really close for some of us that are you know over sixty. All us TOS people, 
who um, know that the science fiction was just like something that black people didn't do, read, have, what are you talking about? And so, you know, it was a big deal. And it's, this story is something else and it's done so well. And again, it has that, that idea of what's real and what's not real. Mm -hmm. You know what's what's imaginary and who who's the real person in this? And I, I just love that last twist of the knife at the end, where it's like, is Benny real? Right. <laughs> or, right. You know, or is Deep Space Nine real? It's, it's just a great episode, and I loved I love that they brought um, J uh, Joseph go back for a role in this, and you know everybody was out of their makeup, so we could see these actors yes. playing this role. It was just phenomenal to see that. I just really love it when they can get out of the makeup and do their thing. I love seeing Odo as the uh, the, the publisher or the, uh, the, well, the manager of the office, not the publisher, but it was just great. And I, they nailed the time period. And I, I mean, I just, yeah, I, I agree with you, Bill. This one deserved an Emmy. It should have been. This again is yes. said, often ignored because it's science fiction, because it's Star Trek and people just poo poo it. But this mm -hmm. is one that should have been looked at. So I didn't like Fran. I mean, I'm Fran and our ages are different, but um, also like Fran, I can't watch this uh, episode. It's just not something that I want. I, I, I think it's a great episode. I think it's done well. I think the acting is wonderful, but it's not an episode that I enjoy watching. Um, yeah, when we, hard. like Samia and I, when we were growing up, um, we might not have experience this every day, but my God, every time we look, turn on the television, there was some television show telling us and, you know, telling us about what, you know, dramatizing all of this. After a while, I don't know about you, but I don't want to see this anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I know it's there. I know what happened. Have family like Fran and um, Sabrina mm -hmm. who had to go through this. And it's, it's sometimes it's, it's very difficult you know, we we were a race of people who are, are traumatized constantly by the things yes. that happened to us. And although this show, this is an excellent, excellent, and don't get me wrong, it is an excellent episode. And that's why it is at number two. But it is not an episode that I will watch. Um, I just, I can't. It's, it's it, it brings up too much, you know, and it is not the far distant past. This is something right. that's happening on a regular. It's happening now, every it's day, right still, now. you know, I mean, still, you know, that's, only, that's what's so is, hurtful. Yeah. Only it's recorded now. Well, yeah, yeah. That's sometimes. Only, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, right. you know, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's happening now. And uh, this episode is a difficult episode even, uh, but I, I, I try to watch it as many times as I can. Mm -hmm. I just can't watch it all the time, but I would be lying if I didn't say it was the most important episode to me. Oh yeah, you know, uh, personally. Oh, well, I think know. that's why it's number two. Yeah. It's difficult, but it is number two. Yeah, for me. yeah. it would have been. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are we ready for number one? Yes. All right, are you guys ready for number one? The Sci-Fi Sisters. One. Anybody yeah, have only a one? Anybody oh, have seventy-three episodes? Oh yeah, let's see this. If anybody has a guess out there before anybody we. Anybody got a guess? Yeah. Any guess? Any guess? We got what episode got life. all four sisters to vote? Voted yes, on. this is <laughs> <laughs> drum roll, please. Can you get any guesses? Nope. Number one, Sci-Fi Sisters, Deep Space Nine episode. Yep, DJ Kitty Cat in the pale moonlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, you got yep. it. You got it. Season six, episode 19, with mounting losses in the Federation Dominion War and the specter of defeat, Captain Sisko enlists Garrick's help to persuade the Romulans to join the Federation Klingon Alliance to win the war. However, Sisko soon learns that to save the Federation, he may have to betray the values it stands for. I don't even know what to say. I'm saying I can I handle it. Do. I'm saying I can handle it. Yeah. And I mean, I can handle it. Yeah. And I think it. I can handle it. <laughs> and, and here we go again with self-help and therapy. And he's like, all I need to do is talk to my personal log. I'm going to race it. this shit and I'm good to go. I was like, boom, yeah, that's my captain. Yep. <laughs> Work it all out. Shake it off. <laughs> 
I wish I had. Oh, here's my glass. It's a fake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everything about bribing, lying, punching people. He's Killing. doing everything in this, and he does not care. I love it. When he sat down in the chair at the end, turned to the side, crossed his leg, threw his arm over the back of the chair, and said, and I can live with it. I was like, mm -hmm. yes, baby. Oh, That's baby. right. Warrior Cisco. Yeah, it is a dark episode. It's such a real episode. I mean, I love that real. episode because it's like, how do we maintain the peace that, that the Federation is supposed to bring, right? You know, the things that we have to do. And of course, like, of course, because it speaks directly to us as Americans who have for for years, for generations, been the quote unquote peacekeepers around the world, you know, what do we do to maintain this peace? What do we have to do to maintain our democracy and our way of life? Yeah, quote unquote. Yeah, okay, quote I unquote. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, jerking all, all over the place. Yes, he did. Yes, he, he did. did. No, he said you asked me because you knew I would do the things that you, you do wouldn't it. do. Right, <laughs> baby. Oh. Yes. Oh my even, god. Even Quark got some men. He was like, "I like you, human." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> man has a price, man. Oof. Everybody was doing their, you know, that piece of themselves that comes out only in war like what i've got to do like do you have it do you have the, the guts to do it and he's like yeah you know i'm gonna get this done this war's gonna be over i'm gonna bring them in right. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow and i i love that it's the romulans you know our oldest enemy in star Trek. enemies yes <laughs> yeah our oldest yeah being romulan and here come right. the Romulans. Yeah, I like um, we don't have to do anything. All you have to do is be your mistrustful Romulan self. So you know, you. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Okay, we're almost out of time, but before we go, I just want to know. I mean, well, one of two questions. Which which question? Uh, I mean, which question? Which episode of yours that you wanted that was on your list that didn't make our list? Are you the most disappointed? Didn't make our list. In the pale moonlight. I mean, I'm sorry. It's a paper moon. Uh -huh. It's only a, it's, oh my it's only it's only a paper moon. <laughs> Favor the bold. Explorers. Mm. Oh yeah, I love that one. Mine mine was duet. Uh another good one. Duet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All you guys want a, a one vote. You, you know, one, there's one. Do you guys want to do your list? We have oh, time. My, yeah, no, there's one that I there's one that I forgot really quick. No, I forgot one. Now. No, I don't want to do my list. <laughs> no, there, there's, 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 there's one that our list that we're gonna post them on on um yes. sure, Jill, vote on the mothership. Let's put it in the mothership. Um and uh there's one that uh I um forgot that the, remember the one where Miles was imprisoned mm -hmm. and but he was and, and they time. uh hard time. Hard time. Oh my! I can't believe I meant to put that on my list. That's yeah. a hard one for me to watch. It's hard, I, I, but it's I, amazing. Know, I know these other ones. That, that one really gets me so depressed for O'Brien that I can't even deal with that one. Even though, um, you know, Jeff <laughs> Moore is close because he's really, yeah he's really getting into his old Settler Three self there. Love you too, Bill. Miles must suffer. <laughs> Four miles. <laughs> miles. Yeah, four miles. Yes, DJ Kitty Cat. We could put it on for a poll day, you know, and everybody can everybody can weigh in their top tens. Ooh, that uh -huh. I don't know if we get enough space in the poll, but <laughs> I know, right? We're gonna we're gonna break Facebook with that one. We end up with that. <laughs> <laughs> but we will post our our own individual lists on um, sci-fi sisters dot com. So look for us, uh, look for us on that. And um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a really fantastic show. This has been, I mean, just a lot of fun to sit here and chat about this with you guys. So don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and leave a comment. And don't forget to, I mean, this is all a family thing. And if you're, if you're new to us and if you haven't seen the seventh rule or participated in the seventh rule in the chat pack, Come join the family. And also, 
Also as important, come support Trek Geeks Network, which we are proud members of. Trek Geeks rocks and talk about the most uh, positive fan base. We got two of the most positive fan bases uh, for Star Trek in Trek Geeks Network, in Camp Kittimer, and uh, the Seventh Rule and the Chat Pack. I mean, we couldn't be happier to have found our homes in both of these places. And maybe you will too. So thanks everybody. Reach out to us, the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club or the Mothership on Facebook. And we love you. And peace, love, and hair grease, my friends. <laughs> do, 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 do.